Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Simple Watch Reviews, where I review simple watches in a straightforward way. Today, the way Chinese watchmakers are using software development techniques to change the watch industry. So I've recently got into Chinese watches in a big way and I've reviewed a bunch of them on the channel. I think there are some fantastic value for money watches coming out of China and available on sites like AliExpress. And I think there's one really big difference between the way Chinese watch brands operate and the way other watch brands operate. And it's not to do with homages. So clearly many of the Chinese watch brands have built up their reputation by making homages. And you might think that's a big difference between the way they operate and the way other watch brands operate. But I don't think that's really fair. I think homages and copies of other watch borrowing designs have long been part of watchmaking all around the world. I think the Chinese are maybe a bit more upfront about doing it, but I think Swiss, German, Japanese watch brands have all done that kind of thing in the past as well. The watch industry has long been one that borrows from itself rather than always coming up with completely original designs. Instead, I think the really big difference between the way Chinese watch brands operate and everyone else operates is in their actual ways of working. So if you think about the normal watch release cycle for a Swiss brand like Tissot, for example, so they will come up with a new watch design or maybe reissue uh, an old watch design as seems to be the thing that everyone is doing at the moment. So take the PRX, for example. So a few years ago, Tissot reissued the PRX. They came up with kind of a new version of the PRX and they issued that. And originally they issued it one size, which I think was 40 mil, uh, and with one movement, quartz. And if you were to go out today to a watch shop, you could still buy that 40 mil quartz PRX that they reissued a little while ago. What they have done since then is they haven't iterated on that particular watch, that particular design. They've just expanded the range of PRXs. So clearly it was a hit and now you can get automatic PRXs. You can get PRXs in a range of different sizes. There are loads more colours available. There's a chronograph version. So they basically just expanded that range, but they've kept the original watch the same. And that tends to be what the big watch brands do, what the Swiss and Japanese in particular watch brands do. So Seiko do exactly the same thing. So, you know, they will introduce a new dive watch and if it's successful, gradually you will see more and more colours and styles of that dive watch being issued. But the original one they issued stays exactly the same. The difference with Chinese watch brands is, and certainly this is true of the ones I've observed. So one I think is a particularly representative of this is watch dives, um, but a, a load of them do it. Pagani Design do it, Militado do it, San Martin do it. What they will do is they will issue a new watch and then they will iterate that design. So you often see on AliExpress, like you know, version two, version three of a particular watch. You never see that with the other watch brands. You never see that with, with Swiss or Japanese watch brands. But the Chinese watch brands will continue to improve their design. They will respond to customer feedback and they are fantastic at getting feedback from customers. They you know, use sites like Reddit to really understand what their customers want, what their customers' preferences are. So they will continue continually iterate their designs to make the watch better and better. And that may be in terms of like design tweaks, so that, you know, the text on the dial and things like that. Or it could be that they've got a, a new manufacturing technique. They're now able to, to get sapphire crystal at a cheaper price than they were before. So they swap out mineral crystal for sapphire crystal, but keep the price of the watch the same. It's that kind of thing. They are continually improving their watches. And this is really something that I think they've borrowed from software development. So that is what I do professionally. That's my job. I, I support a team. I'm what's called a product owner and I support a team with software development to help that team understand what our customers want. And that is exactly how I think the Chinese watch brands operate. They have a backlog of things that they are going to make. They share that backlog with their customers um, and let their customers you know, inform their decisions about what is going to be made next. And they continually improve that. Now, if you think about software development, there is one big difference between that and watchmaking. And that is 
when you buy a piece of software or you you know maybe you have a subscription to a piece of software if there are improvements to that software you tend to get those improvements automatically sometimes you know there may be a, an expansion pack or something like that for a game that you have to pay for but often software companies will just release new versions of the software and you get those new versions as a consumer with watches, clearly that isn't the case. If I buy version one of a watch from Watch Dives, I'm not going to expect them to send me version two of that watch when they release it. So that is a big difference. I think the way these brands operate is fantastic for consumers like me because it means we can be involved in you know the decisions about the kind of watches we get, and we know that our that, that the brands we support will be continually improving their watches and issuing you know, new and hopefully better versions of them. But it does come with a bit of a risk for consumers because I think the other thing that the Chinese watch brands do is release what is known as a minimum viable product. So they will not continually hone and refine a design until it's absolutely perfect and then release it. They will release it to consumers when they think it's good enough. And then they will use feedback from those consumers to improve the watch for the next version. So what that means is when you're buying version one of a watch, you may get something that can be a little bit rough around the edges. Maybe there are some design choices that, that aren't necessarily perfect they you know the brands will have used input from customers go as, as they go through that design process to try and improve that design but it's only really when the watch is in the hands of end consumers that they get you know really really strong feedback so you do take a bit of a risk when you buy version one of a watch because the brands want to get as many new products out onto the market as possible you often see it that a particular style of watch will be homaged by one brand and all of a sudden all the other brands come out with homages to that watch as well and they will try and do that as quickly as they can to capitalize on consumer interest but ultimately i think we as watch fans are winning here we are getting loads of very affordable watches from chinese brands with often fantastic specs you get a lot more watch for your money than you would if you bought swiss or japanese do let me know what you think in the comments, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and please do consider subscribing for more simple watch reviews.